morning, folks. Well, last yesterday I finished stripping out this side of the canoe. So both sides have all their strips. And as you can see, I'll bring the camera over here in a bit and show you how there are 12 of these one inch strips that go all the way to the chine here in, in the center amidships. And then as we get towards the stems, I have to keep adding partial strips to finish off that, by the time we get to the stem, four additional one inch strips. And now what I need to do is trim off all of the excess to give us a well-defined smooth transition between the sides and the bottom panels at that chine. So what I'm going to do then is take that batten, the one that I made when the last video that I made showing how I made my scarf on the panels and then made scarf joints. I had that little half inch strip of plywood left over on each of those eight foot pieces that were seven inches wide. So I joined those together and made a basically 16 foot long flexible batten, which is right here. And so what we're going to do then is sweep that arc from stem to stem and trim off all the excess. So as you can see, this is one stem where we have about a, oh, I don't know, 16 inch focus piece. And then this one's probably about three feet long or less. And then one about five feet long or so. And they just end, so I just use my temporary little tabs that I hot glue on there to hold everything in place until we take it off. Now what we're going to do is remove at least the first three rows of staples and that accomplishes two goals. One, we're not going to hit anything with our circular saw when we trim this off. And then the other thing is what happens when we try to get plywood focused to conform like this. You see the dips between the forms? Now, that's inevitable. We're going to have some of that. But for the most part, that little bit of distortion, well, it'll virtually disappear once we pull these staples out and it releases it from the forms out a little bit so it pulls out. I'll take you over on the other side and show you. So this is the side that I have already trimmed. And as you see down, running down the side, it's, it's a nice smooth line. It's there, there isn't any more distortion. And you can see where, because the staples have been removed here, it's pulled the sides out from the forms just a bit. Not that much, but just enough to get everything to pop out into place. So let's get trimming. I just sharpened the end of a, a narrow flat bladed screwdriver. That's what I use to just pry the staples off. You just want to be careful when you do this. You don't have your finger, your hand on the other side in case it slips. You really don't want to drive this thing into your hand. So we're just going to remove the staples from the first three or four strips that pulls that the side panel, the side strips far enough away from the forms that we lose that that wavering distortion. And and with this 16 inch drill bit, I just watch, I look on the on the back side, on the inside, and then I drill a pilot hole slightly above. slightly above that joint where the side and the bottom meet. There's that angle which is, becomes the, the chine of the canoe. So then what I do after I drill each of those pilot holes, I'll take a 
panel nail and tack it through the pilot hole and into the panel or into the form so that it's secure and we'll just march along do that all the way down with all of those nails in place above that side bottom joint you want to err on having them a little too high rather than too low because they're it's easy enough to trim all this off with the belt sander afterwards but then I just installed that batten on the underside of all those nails and then just spring clamped it in place and then I'm just going to take a, a pencil and scribe that line on the top side of the batten going over all my all my little tabs and I'll just sweep that arc all the way down with the batten removed and all of my temporary panel nails removed and all the staples removed that would hit the saw blade I'm going to use my cordless circular saw to cut that right along that line on the top side of that line and I have the blade set so it'll just cut through the plywood and through my little tabs that are all well, encounter along the way and I do it I, I hold the saw so that the the motor end is above the line it just makes it a lot more accurate for me to make that cut With that excess wood trimmed off with the circular saw, the next step is to sculpt it. Sculpt this edge with the, with the belt sander. And what we're doing is basically keeping that belt sander at the angle of each of the bottom panels and conforming our sides to those. And then to keep things fairly uniform I just take a scrap piece of plywood and lay it on there and then go over on the other side and look in and make sure that everything sits as it will once the bottom panel is on so we'll, we'll finish off sculpting our edges and then we'll we'll fine-tune them a little bit with by hand sanding I think it looks pretty decent so with a piece of the what's going to be the bottom panel laid on there and yeah, once it's secured down that should be a pretty nice joint there that transition from the bottom to the sides that hard shine won't be all that hard once we're done so next thing we do is get the bottom on this thing Till next time, this is Mark again with Backwood Basics. Let's work together.